Well, we all know that water is central to life. It's important for all sorts of utilitarian reasons, such as transport, and we drink it and we, we uh, use it for industry and so forth. But it's also important in terms of spiritual and symbolic values in all the Chris in Christianity and in, in uh, the other religions. Water is quite important. Um, evolutionary theory has it that what we find beautiful is survival enhancing for us as a species but that explains why we like lovely clear water and perhaps don't like stagnant water but it doesn't really explain why we like the sea which we can't drink and, and use. Water has immense psychological and physiological effects on us uh, which we often don't appreciate. It's been found from a number of studies that viewing car parks for instance or blank walls is far worse than viewing trees and water in terms of stress levels, in terms of in hospital stays, patients in hospitals will stay, uh, stay less and have fewer analgesics than if they are just looking at blank walls. Uh, for prisons too it's important in the same way. So if we build the new Royal Adelaide Hospital it should have nice views out over the Torrens Lake. Um, the uh, water also encourages creativity. Uh, how many sort of walks in the park, you know, going down by the sea, have, have uh, encouraged us to think of, uh, have thoughts which uh, may even lead to Nobel Prizes for, for some people, and, or having brilliant wa brain waves in the shower. The, um, in Adelaide, you think of a place like Salisbury, and when I grew up in the 60s, it was a sort of dry, barren area, but it's now the image of it is of lakes and trees. It's, it's changed its image immensely, and of course, that has immense benefits to the people out there. Light, Colonel Light, when he established Adelaide, straddled the River Torrens, but unfortunately su subsequent generations failed to protect the other uh, creeks and waterways across the Adelaide Plains, and so we've sort of channeled them, we've put them underground, and it's a really sad loss uh, for the water that, uh, that we now no longer have going across the water, across the plains. We can't see it, it's, it's confined in channels. Water adds value to properties. It's, uh, it can add even double, double the value of a property. Um, I did some work looking at the seaside suburbs along Adelaide foreshore, and they're about 22% higher than the adjacent suburbs away from the sea. Uh, similarly, places like Mawson Lakes uh, are quite appreciably higher value with the water that, that they have. Water, Adelaide, of course, lacks the macro water features of uh, Sydney or Melbourne or uh, Sydney or, or Hobart or Canberra. And so we need to think about micro water features using the lakes that we have, the wetlands, uh, some of the wetlands that have been established, and, and seeing if we can enhance and, and extend these across the metropolitan area. The Victoria Park Racecourse provides a, an opportunity for a lake there. We should be establishing such things as fountains and waterfalls in shopping centres and hospitals and schools. Um, so water, uh, urban water has been dominated by utilitarian concerns, uh, flooding and pollution. But I suggest that the psychological and the physiological benefits of it are immense and we should be factoring these into our water management as well. Thank you. Water is an important resource and it's important that we get the price of water correct. Most people today I think would agree that for Adelaide we underprice our water and many people would argue we need to increase it. But by how much and what are the implications if we do that? When we start talking about the price of water, we're actually talking about the price of many different commodities. We're talking about the price of food, we're talking about the price of wine, we're talking about the price of houses. These things are all interrelated, and that makes getting the price right very important, both as a community and as individuals. The price of water in Adelaide is generally accepted to be too low at the moment, but when we start looking at alternatives, most of them seem to suggest the price must be higher. Why is this a, in many ways a good thing? It's a good thing from the point of view that it makes people think a lot more about the value of water and it make, means it changes their behaviour. When you start pricing water correctly, you not only affect individuals' demand for water, they start thinking about how they're using it, are they putting it on their garden, uh, how much are they using in the shower, but you also start encouraging businesses to think of alternative ways of either conserving their water use or perhaps even supplying new forms of water. As people think more about water, you start to think about different types of water. So you could have different prices for, say, garden water versus drinking water. You start to see the encouragement of businesses to supply uh, garden water. Certainly governments respond to price mechanisms by saying, well, perhaps stormwater becomes more uh, valuable but also more possible to, to implement. 
there have been a number of studies that have looked at the alternative sources of water and the price of those per litre in terms of production. Some of the most uh, simple and efficient ways of reducing our water demand uh, involve subsidising uh, water conservation methods. These sorts of things are at the lower end of, of what's possible. They increase our efficient use of water, but they also mean that people start to factor into their houses or into their businesses the costs of the equipment that they need to conserve that water. So once you start moving the price of water, you start affecting people's behaviour in a multitude of ways. And to get that right takes quite a deal of care and it's not just a simple raise the price and everyone will be better off. There's also the equity concerns. What about people who can't afford that increase in price? At the moment we subsidise people, we give them uh, some sorts of uh, subsidies if they're say pensioners for the cost of water. Those sorts of things could be investigated more widely. Um, again, as the price rises they give us more options to think about how we might balance equity with efficiency. At the end of the day, it's important that we have enough water both for the environment, for the community and for future generations. And so that means getting that price point right for all the different types of water is both a complex question and something that will be a challenge for people today and in the future. Thank you. Water is a huge issue at the moment. Um, it's not one that's going to go away either. How we deal with water is fundamentally important and I think it's one of those things that the community really has to have a really good debate about. Um, the board that I work for, the Adelaide and Manlofty Rangers Natural Resource Management Board, deals with water in a number of ways. It uh, looks at water allocations so that uh, streams and rivers are kind of hopefully underutilised or not overutilised. Um, it also looks at water affecting activities and has some um, control over those. But they're kind of structural and what I think is perhaps more important uh, is how we value water. Uh, we live in a very arid and dry country and I think we need to realise that. I see signs of that happening. Um, this water regulations and the crisis in the Murray-Darling Basin are leading us to a greater awareness and sense that the country we live in is not one that we can treat the way we have. This program that I run, Natural Resource Management Education, NRM Education, is dealing with schools and helping them to uh, grow greater capacity. The old model of environmental education that basically raised awareness hasn't really worked. We've run Water Watch, a program that we also run uh, for 15 years, and we really can't point at any kind of change in behaviour. So now we're looking at how do we kind of ingrain sustainability into the school's ethos and value system so that everything a school does is sustainable. We look at water, we run, as I say, the Water Watch program, we monitor macroinvertebrates, we monitor water quality. We also uh, look at um, uh, native fish, and we've had some fantastic uh, results, thousands of native fish caught in one trap, uh, which tells us that something is still there, that fish are still there. We know that uh, the, the torrens, where we found those fish, has a, a fish ladder at the mouth of the torrens. We think those kind of actions are starting to make a difference. If we can kind of install that uh, awareness and capacity to take action, which is really what we're about, in young people, then I guess we can look forward to meeting the challenges of the future.